No, yes. Welcome to the GNOME Foundation AGM. Um, as you will shortly find out, I am now the president of the board. Um, and so I pronounce this meeting formally open. Um, one thing that's very exciting about this meeting is that it's the 20th Guadec, um, which kind of follows a couple of years after our 20th birthday um, as you know, the GNOME project. So um, this is an auspicious occasion. Um, just a quick run through of the agenda. Um, some welcomes and introductions. And uh, a very brief report from me um, before we hand over to Carlos as a treasurer, um, Neil as the ED, um, and then our traditionally fantastic committees and teams will present their updates for the past year. Um, then there's a photo um, where we can have a little break, go outside, um, and then we'll come back for the um, Q&A where we can actually have both the board and the staff answering questions from you. Um, and then our infamous pants awards, um, which for British English speakers, trousers. Um, so, by way of introductions, uh, myself, Robert McQueen, um, I am the president of the board this year. Thank you to my board colleagues for the vote of confidence. Um, as I'm louder and Alan is more organized, um, we decided that we would separate the roles of president and chair. Um, so I'm very pleased to introduce Alan as the vice president and chair of the board. Um, returning for the third time, um, Carlos Soriano as treasurer. Um, and Philip Comento as the secretary, returning second time. Uh, Federico Menicintero as the vice secretary. Where is Federico? <laughs> as directors at large uh, joining the board this year for the first time, um, Britt Yesel and Tristan Van Berken. Perhaps more importantly, um, it's just to take a moment to um, recognize the contributions and show our appreciation for the outgoing board members, um, particularly Nuriti, who has served uh, for several years as um, the foundation president um, and also on the directors and also on the engagement team and has done a huge amount of things. Um, Kat also jumped back into the board last year. She's been on the board in the past um, and she's been a, a constant presence in Guadalajara organizations. So these are two individuals who give a huge amount of time and energy to the known project. So um, thanks to both of them. Um, the, uh, the power of the board is magnified by our um, beloved committees uh, who give us additional, um, additional feet on the ground to deal with things that would normally, um, usually due to uh, spending authority and other legal reasons, come back to the board. Um, so we have uh, these committees which are predominantly renewed uh, from last year. We have a couple of new members, um, some new members on travel committee and engagement committee. Um, but uh, all of these people um, are giving up their time as volunteers uh, to help the foundation to succeed as an organization. Um, so please thank you to all of our committee members. This year we have as many staff as we do board, so <laughs> um, Neil can maybe introduce the staff as well. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Rob. Um, so for those who don't know me, I'm Neil. I'm the executive director of the foundation, so basically in charge of making sure it all goes smoothly, things like conferences run, things like the project is supported. Um, for those that don't know, we've had a bit of an expansion in the number of staff we've had. Um, so uh, for many years we've had Rosanna, uh, who is over here as our director of operations, so you'll know Rosanna from, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Rosanna's wonderful at keeping all the books and making sure people get reimbursements and, and covering travel expenses and, and things like that. Uh, we have been joined by Christy, who is there, who has helped organize this squad out, amongst other things. Also in strategic initiatives, so looking after our sponsors and things that are very important to us is uh, Molly de Blanc, who is over there. Uh, for the first year, we've started employing actual developers as well. So first that came on board is Emmanuel Bassi as our G2K core developer. 
Uh, and for many years we had Andrea Veri as our lead sy uh, systems engineer. He's fortunately, due to new children, can't actually be here um, this time, but um, I'm sure he's um, going to be very well represented by Bart, who's our DevOps engineer, who is here. So just by way of a little bit of context, I said the President's report would be a little bit shorter, um, and that kind of reflects something that we've been trying to change in the Foundation um, over the past board term. Um, with the introduction of actually having a team of staff and being able to separate some of the day-to-day -day things, um, the board is able to actually kind of focus on our role as uh, kind of oversight and strategy for the Foundation. So we've been able to actually step back from some of the day-to-day -day things uh, and spend a bit more of our time and energy making sure that the Foundation has um, kind of good operating and governance procedures, that we have um, good policies in place that govern how our resources are used, um, and that we have a clear strategy and goals for the Foundation that um, the staff can actually rely on year on year, um, kind of following those goals. Um, the kind of flip side of that is that it actually reduces, to some extent, how much time and energy we, we demand from our directors, um, which is a good thing. That means that it's, a, it's an easier role to volunteer for. So we widen the number of people who can actually consider and, and bring their expertise and their perspectives to the board. Um, it also underpins the change that we are, um, I will talk about in a little bit, about the, the term of the directors. And if this is an easier job, um, and one of the things that's actually important for the foundation to have consistent goals and consistent strategy um, is that we don't just change them like all the time. Um, so we actually are looking to change the board term specifically because being a director shouldn't be such a big ask. It should be something that you can commit to for a longer period. And that stability is hugely meaningful to the staff to actually set up their initiatives and pursue the same goals year on year. Um, so my report gets shorter. That's good. Um, so as I mentioned, developing the role of the board and the executive director and the staff and just kind of, you know, taking account of the fact that as the Gnome Foundation, it's a relatively new um, idea that we've actually got um, as many staff as we do board members and that, that has uh, implications of how we interact as two organizations um, and how the staff interact with the community. So we've been kind of looking at these issues. Um, improved governance and oversight and reporting. So that's, um, you know, I'm Neil's boss. Um, I need to understand what the board's concerns are and represent them to Neil and vice versa. Um, so we've also put in place uh, reporting uh, monthly from Neil about the foundation's activities to the board. Um, and that's actually the basis of different reports that we send out um, to uh, Friends of GNOME um, with Molly's reports, which get, now get sent out. Um, and the basis of our reporting to advisory board members. So they have some insight into what their uh, contributions to the foundation are being used to, to fund. Um, I mentioned the strategic goals. That was uh, a, big, uh, um, a big achievement from our Hackfest last year um, in October. We actually spent you know, a whole day together as a board. Two, two days? Yeah, no, two days together as a board. And we spent a lot of time actually working out how does the foundation fit into the goals of the project and how can the foundation assist those goals uh, and pursue our own mission. Um, we implemented a new travel policy that um, makes it a little bit easier for people to get more support um, if they require that to attend our events. Um, we've tweaked the policies around conference spending and uh, Hackfest's um, approvals, um, as well as um, set out some new guidelines to uh, help the board and the secretary um, uh, meet best practices with preparing and publishing our minutes. Um, we've also, as part of the kind of legal governance, established a new committee um, which is um, a committee of the board that is basically made up of president, treasurer, and one of the board member. Um, and there's a specific legal requirement that we review the compensation, i.e. the salary and other things uh, of the executive director, um, and that we do that annually, and that uh, it has to be compared and it has to be reasonable. Um, so we have a committee that does that, and we can check a box on the IRS form that we have a conflict of interest policy, and we have a compensation committee, and we've verified these things. Um, so this essentially is, is kind of the corporate housekeeping stuff that directors do as a legal responsibility, and maybe we don't talk about it very often, but we've got a lot better that over the past year. We're like a legit foundation now. <laughs> um, in terms of plans for next year, um, I'm very happy this list is shorter than uh, the previous one because uh, we're trying to focus on that strategic role. We, we want to give the foundation staff um, the freedom and the space to deliver the goals that we set for them. Um, so um, one thing that Federico will be talking about is code of conduct. Um, Alan and I and Carlos have been working on um, this kind of taxonomy issue of, of defining GNOME. Um, this is the key legal requirement so that we can decide when our trademark can and can't be used. Um, so 
we're just trying to wrestle that octopus into some useful position. Um, we hope that we can tie that up over the next month or two. Um, and then uh, something that came up uh, during the um, the elections for the directors, um, and Philip gave a, Philip Withnall gave a talk this morning as well. Um, it's about uh, understanding and reviewing and seeing what we can do to reduce the environmental impact of the foundation. Um, and we feel this is worthwhile, so it's uh, it's on our agenda as well. Um, but yeah, otherwise it's continuing to support the foundation, it's continuing to support the staff and making sure that Neil has the resources and the, the instructions that he needs to go off and do the fantastic work. So, over to Neil. Oh wait, not over to Neil. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, foundation members should have, um, courtesy of Jonathan Blanford, um, a exciting ballot form like this. Um, so I mentioned that we are planning to change the bylaws. Um, as the bylaws are legal documents that govern how our corporation entity is run, um, the voting process has to be uh, a bit more, uh, well, has to be done properly. <laughs> um, we can only open it to members of the foundation, which is why uh, Jonathan has been checking it off the list. Um, so we have published the amendments on the foundation list um, probably a month and a half, two months ago, but yeah, quite some time ago. Um, the executive summary, um, we are replacing uh, any gendered terms and pronouns with gender neutral language. So his and her have been replaced with they, chairman with chair, so on and so forth. Um, and the separate vote is for adjusting the terms and the election of directors. So um, each director will serve for a two year term um, and half of the board will be up for re-election uh, each year. Uh, so this for the foundation is a very important thing that means they don't suddenly run the risk of seven people leaving and seven people coming back, a different seven people, and those seven people taking a few months to figure out, okay, hey, what's this whole foundation thing? And then coming up with a new set of goals that means there's potentially months of time that elapse when the foundation is working to goals that are not supported by the current board. Um, so um, we've received some large donations over the past couple of years, and this was actually advised to us um, very strongly by uh, some of our, our donors that said, look, you know, if you're going to do good things with this money, one of the things you need to fix is this kind of everyone goes and maybe no one comes back thing every year. Um, they actually advised us to go for three-year terms. Um, we discussed that quite extensively um, as a board, and we feel that um, given the kind of historic difficulty of finding board members, um, then maybe two years was an okay ask. Um, and that we would obviously improve things significantly over the, the kind of risk of seven people leaving and coming back each year. Um, so um, I support this initiative, but <laughs> um, you may decide for yourself. Um, how it's going to work is you should mark the uh, accept or reject changes, um, just like a GitLab pull request. Um, and we, I think Philip Withnall is our returning officer. Yes, no, maybe? Yes. Um, but when we go out for the group photo, um, there will be a box to put your votes into, and they'll be counted during the Q&A later, and we should be able to deliver the results. Now, over to Neil. Thank you. <laughs> over to Carlos. Fail. <laughs> Uh, hello everyone. So now comes the fun part. Numbers and finances. So what we are going to look today at is basically uh, the fiscal year 18, which is what goes from uh, October 2017 to October 2018. So you can see already that there has been some, some months till now. So keep that in mind because numbers might differ from what we have now. So yeah, let's take a look at the surplus and deficit. So this is a page from the annual report. So you can actually take a look at uh, there as well, but I'm gonna explain it a little bit. So we have uh, most of the things similar for the advisory board. We have a similar income between uh, 2017 and 2018. That's all right. Thank you very much to all the advisory board members. Um, we have the same sponsorship, which is things like Google Summer of Code and some income from other conferences. Uh, uh, but, and WADEC is kind of similar uh, as well, but you can see that the big difference here is donations. So the recurrent donations, such as Friends of Gnome, is kind of similar still, is around $5,000. 
but the different, the big difference here is this one-time donation that we had, which is the one million donations uh, that was split in two years. So we got the 500k already from last year, and we also got the 400k uh, donation from Handshake. So the total amount was 823 uh, thousand dollars, which, as you can see in the bar, is a huge difference from the last year. So the total income that we had last year is one million, which is quite good as well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now for the expenses. So as of last year, we didn't have much of a difference. Uh, the administration is kind of the same, is lower in the last year just because on 2017 we decided to drop some very old invoices that never got paid. So when you do drop those invoices, you need to, to count them as an expenses because it's some income that we account for and now we need to uh, account for that uh, as an expense. Um, so for Wadek, it was cheaper because we have the Guadalajara in Almeria, and in Manchester was uh, quite more expensive. We have a lot more, you know, uh, yeah, it was more expensive there. So um, that's the difference there. For everything else, was kind of similar, but there is a difference to note here, which is employees. So last fiscal year, we still have only Neil and Rosanna, but it was the first year that Neil got the full year salary. So that's the difference that you can see here. Um, for other events, so we had a last norm as well, and uh, so that's why it's also more increased. And the same for other hackfests. So we invest more in hackfests, so we have more expenses. For marketing, we increase a little bit as well. And for Richie, we invest almost uh, twice as last year. And we plan to continue to do the same because it's something that we truly believe on. So the total amount of expenses was uh, 365K. Now, what we are going to look at now is what the budget or forecast, as some people call it, um, uh, agree, the board agreed last October. So that means what we plan to spend on how much and the same for income for this year. Now, a big note here. This is a forecast. These numbers are an approximation and things have changed a lot since we did this budget. So keep that in mind and I will is something that we will have the actual numbers uh, later on this year when we finish the fiscal year. So what, we, what the board agreed last year on October was to have, like the advisory board it was, is kind of the same for the income. Let me take another uh, notes. Uh, yep, yeah. so the advisory board was uh, the same as the last year, that's, that's fine. Uh, for conferences, we plan to spend the same as last year. For donations, we expect the, the other part of the one million to come also this year. And for other expenses, we expect to have the same income, so that's, that's fine. The total amount that we, what, that we expect to have is uh, 700k um, uh, dollars this year. Now, now comes the big difference, which is in expenses. So for admin, uh, this is al always the same. This is insurance, uh, tax advisor, all of that. This is uh, the same every year. For conferences, the same. We expect to have the same expense. But now for employees, we expect to spend a lot more, which is $700,000. Is now the biggest amount that we have ever spent in, in known for, for anything. Um, now, the actual numbers differ quite a lot because not every employee that we have now joined the first day that we agreed this budget on, right? Some people join on May, some people uh, join later, so the, the actual numbers until now is a little bit different. But yeah, continuing, the total amount that we expect to spend was uh, close to the 1 million, it's 900K, uh, and the surplus and deficit it was one, uh, minus 200K uh, thousand dollars. The actual numbers are probably going to be positive this year, but it's something that we will, um, we will confirm uh, later on this year. 
And also this amount is okay because in the current balance, how much uh, cash do we have in the bank? It's okay. We have around $1.3 million in the bank. So we are kind of okay there. Now, that we have savings here is, is very good, but that doesn't mean that we, need, we don't need to invest more in making sure that we have a good influx of income that is stable and is recurring because uh, so far we had a lot of one-time donations, but we want to move also towards uh, having more uh, recurrent income so we can make the foundation uh, sustainable and stable. And that's all for me, and I will hand on to Neil. Okay, thank you very much. Um, it's a bit warm, probably shouldn't have worn a suit. Um, so yes, yeah, so we've had a quite an exciting year. Uh, as mentioned, we have four new staff who have now come on and are helping with the foundation. I'm sure everyone who's um, interacted with them have uh, found how wonderful it is to, to actually get some real full-time support on, on the areas they work on. A uh, couple of straightforward things we've had. We've uh, changed our bank account. We had um, some issues with our previous bank account, so that required um, quite a lot of work to move between banks and get everything updated um, to, to use the new banks. Um, as part of this um, sort of expansion and actually having staff and having obviously a higher expenditure level, uh, we've had to improve our financial tools and tracking. So in the past we used GNU Cash, um, which had some issues, shall we say. Uh, I, I generally feel that financial tools should do things like not lose money and this was becoming a bit of a problem with GNU Cash. So we've now moved to a more online system. It is something called Udu, which used to be OpenERP. So it is all free software and it's hosted ourselves. So we're not using any sort of external cloud services for that, but we're getting a lot of benefits from that. For example, being able to automatically import statements from bank accounts and PayPal and things like that, rather than having to manually type into GNU Cash every month what our updates are, are doing. Um, for those that don't know, we have signed up for the Apple Developer Plab, uh, Program and the Android Play Store. The former was primarily to help with GIMP and signing their binaries, uh, but it is also available for others as well. So if that's of interest, then, then please let us know. Uh, the Android Play Store uh, we've now signed up with, um, which I'm sure you, everyone who's used the Quadec app will appreciate it. It's quite a fantastic app that, that really helps people plan their time. We've seen a, also a move for people who don't know um, with discourse from mailing lists. So this originally started with the GTK mailing lists um, and moving to discourse rather than mailman. Uh, I think it's fair to say that within approximately the first two months of use of discourse, then we've had more engagement on there than we have over an entire year of all the GTK mailing lists combined. Um, it's something that also others are moving to, so we have uh, Builder now uses that, lots of the community teams, the engagement team, documentation team want to move, and I did note just before I came to Quadec that the foundation list is also interested in, in moving. Um, so I think we, we will start to see a, a, a greater move towards actually a modern tool set which people can find it a lot easier to interact with. Now, for those who are absolutely wedded to email, that's fine. We've configured it in a way that it will act just like a mailing list so you can continue using it that way. But I would strongly suggest people go and have a look at, and give it a go. We've also had a fair amount of legal work um, that we've been doing. So we have traditionally had two lawyers who've worked with us pro bono. Uh, unfortunately, the disadvantage of um, lawyers who are working for you for free is that they can get busy with actual paid work. Uh, so we have engaged actual paid lawyers as well to help with a, a few things. So for example, one of those is the FlatHub legal work. So in FlatHub and extensions.gnome.org, we take uh, software and code from third parties. Now, obviously, we don't want to randomly just distribute anything that's given to us. So we needed things like terms and conditions and acceptable use policies for our platforms. Um, Additionally, we've had things like our privacy policy has been reviewed and our, the drafting for our, the amendments have also been uh, reviewed by lawyers. In terms of trademark, we have a fantastic um, trademark lawyer called Pam Chesek, 
uh, who has uh, now registered for us um, a number of trademarks which have been missing for a while. So we have Flat Hub, Flat Pack, GTK and the GTK logo. So despite us using this for about, <laughs> Emmanuel is very happy about this, so despite us using this for many years, it hasn't actually been registered, so that is going ahead at the moment and hopefully should be complete in possibly four to six months or so. Again, as we've had more staff come on board, we've had to create infrastructure and create policies and things, so it's not just myself and Rosanna talking to each other. Um, I remember when we first, approximately this time last year, when Guadec was in Almeria, um, unfortunately I was on my honeymoon. So I'd just been married about three days and Rosanna was giving her talk, uh, announcing the new staff. And so I left my new wife in a local bar and I went to my hotel room and did some work publishing the job descriptions and said, it's fine, just email info at gnome.org with your, with your resume and we'll look at it. And then I got about 140 emails within the course of 24 hours. So putting in some systems to place to actually be able to track applicants and make sure everyone's replied to and, and things like that has, has been interesting. Um, also a, a fantastic thing you've seen is the Friends of Gnome updates. Um, so this is something that started again. Friends of Gnome is our regular donor program and huge thanks to uh, Molly who's still over there. Excellent for, for sending those out. And some of the things we've been doing um, have been around hackfests and events. So we've been supporting the, these quite heavily over the, the next few years. So as I mentioned, we had a foundation hackfest um, in the UK. Um, this was to sort of introduce new, pro new projects and make sure that the board is, is synchronized, but also many different hackfests that have kind of happened throughout the, throughout the, throughout the world. Um, one thing we are trying to do as well is to make sure that um, a lot of the hackfests are co-located with other conferences, so we're not flying 10, 15 people just somewhere for a weekend. So it's tied to another conference or it's somewhere that, that people would be anyway. Uh, we then sort of obviously continued with our hackfests. Um, for example, the West Host Hackfest was, was really interesting. That was tied with OzCon in Portland. Uh, we had the GTK, the engagement and the documentation teams um, all together um, in Portland to, to kind of really work things out. Speaking of events, um, we had a number of events that we attended. So places we turned up at with staff, with, boo with, with uh, booths uh, to try and support the conference and really market and show off what GNOME is doing. Um, this is certainly a lot higher than it's been in the past because we want to try and reach different groups of people and try and ensure that we can talk about GNOME and potentially to just community members but also to potential sponsors as well. Um, so there has been an increase in, in the number of uh, events we have attended. And thanks to all of, and the, a lot of this is thanks to our donors, uh, and especially our Friends of Gnome. So uh, put your, so Friends of Gnome, for those who don't know, is our regular donation program. Uh, this is especially important to the foundation because this is an income stream that we can rely on. So this is something that's coming regularly and that we can make plans for it. So put your hands up if you are a Friend of Gnome. Thank you very much for all those people. For everybody else, take your phone out, open up your QR code, and you're not allowed to go to the beach until I've seen at least 15 sign-ups. Um, interestingly, I was having a look at the Guadec um, Twitter feed the other day and somebody was complaining that there aren't any keynotes. I did point out our two keynotes and this and then when we announced it on Twitter and they said, ah, oh, but it's not a real keynote because you're not announcing something new and something exciting. Um, so in the, in the traditional way of just one more thing, I do have a small announcement um, which is quite exciting. This is something we've been working on for, for a while. Um, the GNOME Coding Education Channel. We have received a generous grant from Endless of half a million dollars to be able to run this. And we will, are running a competition for projects. The idea is to gather ideas uh, for, to which teach coding um, to people using free and open source software. 
and this will start in January 2020. Our aim is to increase the number of uh, youths and adults who are trained in coding uh, free and open source software and interact with GNOME and our technologies. So there's a series of different prizes, a series of rounds to try and uh, create these ideas and to bring them actually into fruition. Um, it's very exciting because it also allows people, instead of just learning basic coding, to actually work on a real world product, to be able to use something that's used by tens of millions of people throughout the world and to be able to get that exposure and also to learn how to program free software rather than going away and creating the next Fortnite game or, or whatever it might be. So it's a way of being able to help people to um, increase their, their, their programming skills and also to introduce them to free software. So if you're interested in that and exactly the details about how that's going to be work, there's two talks tomorrow. Uh, one from Rob McQueen um, at 10.30, I believe, yes. And then I have a talk at 2.30, uh, which is a sort of about the future of GNOME and where we're going to be going. Um, so that's very exciting and a huge thank you to Endless um, for supporting this, uh, this initiative. And so now I'll hand back to our, our, our lovely president here to run through the committee and the team reports. So, first up, Federico. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, over the past year, uh, the Code of Conduct Committee has been working on establishing a new Code of Conduct for GNOME. Uh, these are the members of the committee. Uh, you, I think you know us already. Uh, Christel Dalskier, myself, Felipe Borges, who is, where's Felipe? There's Felipe. And uh, Rosanna Yuen, who is over there. Uh, we have not been writing the new code of conduct by ourselves. We contracted with Sage Sharp of Otter Technology uh, because they are experts in, in the field. Uh, and Sage has been uh, writing the new community code of conduct for GNOME. It's based on the uh, contributor covenant, which a lot of people are familiar with. Uh, Sage has been helping with our incident response uh, procedures, the archival procedures, and uh, some guidelines for uh, for moderators of online forums. Uh, this has been an extremely thorough process. I'm completely delighted with the work that Sage has been doing. Uh, they have asked us questions that, you know, I never imagined would need consideration into a code of conduct. So it's it's really, really, really excellent work. Uh, when will the new code of conduct be active in GNOME? Uh, the board still needs to discuss some things around it. Uh, it's on the agenda for the, uh, for the following board meetings. Uh, once the board uh, votes and approves the code of conduct and the procedures, you know all the related things will be updated in the wiki, uh, the reporting guidelines, the data retention policy for, for incident reports. And we will have, uh, in, in some forums you have seen how at the top of, of their websites it says if you post here you, uh, you abide by the, conduct, by the code of conduct. We'll, we will have the same thing in GitLab, in mailing lists, in this course, and uh, in official GNOME forums elsewhere on the web. Um, for this WADEC and some months before that, uh, members of the Code of Conduct com Committee and our volunteers for this WADEC took Autotech's training in uh, incident response. So we know how to deal with uh, people wanting to report a violation to the Code of Conduct. Uh, this is really useful stuff to know. If you are 
uh, attending a conference or, or actually organizing a conference. Uh, the people who have taken uh, Sage's training are Molly, Christy, Heather. And the idea is that we start forming a, a group of people all over the world who know how to deal with incident reports. So if you would like to attend a training, please get in touch with us. Uh, what we will likely do is get a few, once we have a few people who want to take the training, we can sponsor it uh, by, by paying Otter Tech to do it. And uh, that's the contact email for the Code of Conduct com Committee. And uh, I'll hand it over to Herman. It has been seven years since my, my last work. So here is a report of what we have been doing the, uh, the last year. Um, there are some hiccups for people who have been applying for sponsorship last year. I want to tell you what has happened since uh, last week. First, we have uh, GDPR. So everything was delayed because we want to be comp in compliance with uh, GDPR. And then we have a new uh, member, it was uh, Adelia. Uh, so Adelia and myself, we had to deal with all the sponsorship last year. And then there was another delay because children, it happened that Adelia and myself have children, child at the same time more or less. So everything got delayed one more time. And this time, thanks to, thank you Philip, that he took over for many requests. So. Um, I think he doesn't want to say, but if he's doing a lot of work of the travel committee as well, so I think he's a committee member too, even if you don't like. <laughs> and then he got he recruited three new members who are MEG4, that I don't see where you are, there you are, and Uma Hain, I think, is back then, and it's Guillaume uh, Gomez that he didn't come today. And they have been dealing with a lot of the Guadec staff uh, this year. And also there is a new policy in place that the idea is that try to fund as much as possible to the people uh, if there are sometimes some changes in, I mean, we delay sometimes the process and the people are applying and since the time they apply and the time they finally get the acceptance and they can buy the tickets, there might be some difference. We want to try to cover that difference. Uh, we want to try to improve the process in order to um, help people uh, who request, who need visa, especially for India, that sometimes the process is a little stressful for them, especially for newcomers. Um, so we want to tell them as much in advance as possible so they can apply and they can still pay the ticket with what we have to we have, um, actually approve. Um, however, with the GDPR, there was a lot of pain in the actual um, workflow. And I for sorry, I just saw uh, uh, Dave, uh, this also, uh, is an old time member of the uh, travel committee. Uh, as usual, all the lane is on me, like this fault. I'm sorry about that. Um, the thing is that we want to improve many things because of, because of GDPR compliance. Uh, we, have, we cannot have documentation, for example, in our computers. They had to be in some servers. I mean, using a lot of information from the server and how everything works at this moment. We receive the application and we have to do a lot of copy paste from multiple parts. So some of the things that we are discussing is how we well can improve this one. So people have to send less information have to fill less information, but it's still good information, the actual that we need, and to proceed with the, reimbu the reimbursement as, as, as fast as possible. Uh, so whenever we have the information, Rosanna, who is the one, she is the one proceeding with the reimbursement and giving all that bite that we need in order to proceed with, uh, with different kind of issues that my corner cases that I usually have. Uh, thank you to Meg and the other travel people committee. We are going to try to create an application that it might work or might not where well, we, we will see, and if it works, it's going to be the, all the process more smooth, uh, particularly to reply faster, as fast as we can, and also to avoid issues like we have at this moment that sometimes applications get dropped and nobody get notified that the application are dropped, and it's an actual issue. 
Um, so we want to avoid and to try to fix all those hiccups. So for all the people who have been applying for the last year, appreciate, I appreciate your uh, patience, and I hope everything is going to be better for the next term. Especially that because we haven't had so many people active in the travel committee uh, in the past, usually have been one or two people that, one or two papers on that, uh, you see, okay, nobody's attending this one, I start to work on that until the next time someone is uh, busy and someone else take over the work, and it's usually one person working on that. But this time there have been at least two or three working simultaneously, which makes the process faster and less stressful even for the people in the, in the committee. So thank you very much, and I give uh, Tobias from the membership and election committee. Hello, every Hello everybody. <laughs> I hope I don't make the mistake of going too closely. Uh, I'm Toby. I am one of the few people on the membership and elections committee. There's nothing uh, really interesting to report, I'd say. Everything is going as normal. We are still processing applications, and I think we're quite routine and skilled in what we're doing. The uh, most report-worthy thing that I can think of is that this year's election had three winners from the same company, which well then required us to run through the numbers based on, or due to the voting system that we use with this transferable, transferable vote, and then we needed to figure out how to well eliminate the candidate, like the third candidate who won without, say, losing the votes and so on. That was um, a bit interesting to actually comprehend the voting system, and I can fully recommend to go through the theory of how we do the elections because it's actually quite great. Like the, the way we do the elections, like the voting system, the, the fact that you don't lose your vote is actually a very good thing. Uh, other than that, um, we're having members or the, the membership queues are relatively short. We are quite fast in processing uh, incoming requests and we rely on the vouchers that the applicants require so we rely on you that you respond promptly and swiftly uh, to the requests that we send out and so far that's been working very well we have nothing to complain about if you're interested in helping out then we are very open and very welcoming towards new people because we still I mean we, we will need to go to rotate people eventually, so it's good to you know build new people up. So if you're interested in that or in any other aspect of the membership or the elections, then by all means approach me. I usually don't bite. Yeah. I'm happy to be talking to you. Thank you. Divine. One more presentation. <laughs> uh, yeah, hi, I'm Alan. I'm part of the design team. Um, I literally wrote this five minutes before the meeting started, so it's going to be pretty brief. Um, but that's fine because we have lots of great design talks here at Guadec. So uh, Jakob spoke today already, and I spoke, and uh, Tobias is speaking tomorrow, and Clarissa's got a. a talk tomorrow, so there's still loads of stuff that you can go and find out more about. Um, so the, the design team, I think, has been growing recently, and I think we're at, like in a really good place. Like um, We've kind of got a core design team at the moment of myself and Tobias and Sam and Jakob. If you're here, wave. Yay! Um, <laughs> we've... These four people are, are by no means the only people working on GNOME design. We've got um, uh, Fred, where's Fred, who's been working with uh, style sheets. That's what we like to call it. <laughs> and um, we've had some great contributions on the testing and usability testing side. Uh, Clarissa has been doing some work with us this year. Wave Clarissa. Yay. And uh, Renetta's here, who didn't do work this year, but was a previous intern with us and also did some great work. Renetta, are you here? Oh, she's not here. Well, she's around. Um, 
And there are many other people that are, are helping and supporting our work. I can see Cassidy over there, who we talk with a lot about design stuff, and um, designers uh, who are also developers. And it's a, it's a wide circle, but this is the, the main group, and I'm really happy with how that's going. Um, we also, we're also really lucky right now to have a design tools team. Like, who thought we'd ever have that? Like, pretty amazing stuff. So we've got a group of people who are just working, making tools for us designers. So we're very lucky. So, um, yeah. Um, so I don't think Bilal's here, but Jordan's here and Julian, Julian's here. So, yeah, thank you so much. And Xander, sorry. Yeah, very important. Sorry, very last minute slide, Xander. Yeah. Um, so, with all this great stuff going on, we've really been pumping out a lot of design work. And if you're at my talk or Jakob's talk, or if you go to Tobias's talk, you'll hear a lot more about this. I would love to have lots of pretty mock ups and pictures, but I don't. So, um, sorry. Um, but we've got a, like, a long list of things we've done here. Like, we've got the new style application icons and tooling that Jakob talked about today, and there'll be tools rolling out that uh, developers in the room will be able to make use of in the future for that. We've been working on new illustration styles and um, generally trying to harmonize all our assets. Something that's not on this list, we're looking at uh, harmonizing our text styling as well. Uh, ongoing style sheet improvements, like we've already seen the new version of Adwaita come out for GTK. There's more stuff in the pipe for the shell, which is coming out soon. Um, we've got a long list of parts of the, the shell and the core system that we've uh, done a lot of review and did. we've got a lot of design work in the pipe for. Uh, we've got a new first from Greta, new login, new updated notification list, system menu, loads and loads of improvements in um, settings and the control center. Uh, a lot of that's landed already, but there's more to come. We've uh, got lots of new application designs. We're working on the platform, so reviewing patterns, getting patterns properly supported. Lots of work going on the responsive side, particularly through um, everyone at Purism, um, who uh, are currently employing uh, Tobias and Sam, so we're very pleased to have them on the team. And yeah, so it's just going really well, and we've got lots of work, and we need developers to come and help make all this stuff. So come and talk to us. Thank you very much. So I'm Petr Kovács. Uh, this is an update for the documentation team. I think that Compared to last year, we have a more substantial update in that we uh, organized the Hackfest in the West Coast, co-located with engagement in GTK, which was a great opportunity for some of the core members of the documentation team to meet again three years later after our last um, documentation sprint in 2015. And uh, that Hackfest in West Coast focused on user help. <coughs> uh, I think that we also have a roadmap for a potential future meetup to focus more on the uh, current big pain point, I would say, of Nome, that is the status of the documentation site. Uh, we need a new site builder both for, uh, for both user documentation and developer rocks. I think most of you will agree with me that, uh, that what we have now uh, does not really work anymore. So, yeah, so that was the update for, uh, for Hackfest. Uh, other than that, um, uh, we have translators translating our documentation. I would like to thank everybody for their contributions to documentation. It is not the most popular, you know, uh, role uh, for many, but we have people contributing and that keeps us alive. So, thank you.
Hello, uh, I'm Britt. And I'm Naritzi, hello. Um, we're from the engagement team. Um, we're gonna update you on what we've been doing over the last year. My first year with the engagement team, I'd like to add. Um, so, to start off, the engagement team's mission is to grow and foster an awesome GNOME community and to bring GNOME to more users. So, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why we wanted to start with that is that there's an internal and an external component to being on the engagement team. It's not just about marketing and outreach, it's also about trying to make sure that we have a place here where people can easily become uh, part of the GNOME community, can contribute, and where newcomers feel really welcome. So as part of that, how many newcomers do we have in the room right now? Wow. Okay, let's give you some a hand. <laughs> and honestly, this is, a great opportunity for you guys, again, to meet core contributors and to really form relationships that are going to carry from this in-person setting into, you know, just an online setting. I know that when I first started, I was lurking on mailing lists for like a year, and it wasn't until a Guadec when I started to meet people in person that I really started to contribute. So even just today, I was reminded by somebody in our community that he started, he's almost a maintainer status because somebody just reached out to him and said, hey, you know, like, come be part of the team um, and welcomed the, him personally and then has encouraged him to apply for foundation membership, all sorts of things. Um, so just remember that while you're here for all the old comers to try to reach out to newcomers and make them feel welcome, encourage them to participate in BOFs and all of that. Um, okay, so I didn't really go over the slide. This is the stuff that we do, so if you're interested in any of this kind of stuff, you might be interested in joining the engagement team. Oh. Nope, yes? And you might not uh, expect this, but we actually, uh, the engagement team needs coders, we need designers, we need friendly faces, we need people that love talking on the internet. Um, believe it or not, the engagement team, we have our own designers outside of the design team. Uh, over there in the corner is Caroline. She is the resident designer of the engagement team. So if you're enjoying uh, the Anna reports and all of the graphics and all the banners at Guadec, please thank her for that. <laughs> yeah, and it's thanks to Caroline and to other people like her who, um, you know, the reason why we have this awesome annual report design, does anyone have one in their hands? Can you just show them? <laughs> it's beautiful. You guys should take a look. There's some more outside. Um, there's been a huge strengthening of our brand, again, thanks to Caroline. Um, and this stuff matters because it's only when we have a really official looking brand and where we go out and look professional that people are attracted to our project and say like, Gnome is really cool, it looks cool, and it is. Once they start meeting us, they realize that it is cool. Um, some other highlights from this year are that we started a diversity and inclusion team. And for that, it's that, you know, it's all sorts of diversity. We really, this goes back to that idea that we want to make sure that GNOME is a place where everyone feels welcome contributing and where we strengthen our products, the various technologies that we're working on by bringing in new voices and more approaches to solving challenges. And so that's what this team is really about. Besides that, we've been really active on social media in large part thanks to Brit. Um, and we've tried to change around our schedule of meetings from bi-weekly meetings to monthly meetings. We're still kind of testing that out and we're trying to figure out how to do meetings at a time when it works for all areas of the world. That's been really challenging. And so um, if you're interested in joining the engagement team, don't let our meeting schedule you know, block you from uh, joining us because we'll try to figure something out. So, some upcoming initiatives that we're doing. Um, so, you might have noticed we didn't have a 3.32 release video, uh, and that was mostly because Bastian, who's been so amazing in making our videos over the last many, many years, uh, is recently uh, started 
a new employment um, post university. And so uh, for this next 3.34 cycle, which is shaping to be one of the most important releases in GNOME 3 history, um, we have contracted out uh, FreeHive, um, the United States based uh, open source, solely open source media company uh, to make our video for us. Um, we were introduced to them at last year's uh, Libre Application Summit in Denver, and ever since then, uh, they've been great, and we're hoping to have a very strong, prosperous partnership with them going forward. Mm -hmm. Yep. Some other upcoming things, I mean, Gnome Asia is going to have their own slides, so we won't go into this too much, but Gnome Asia is coming up, so we encourage you all to attend. And also the Linux Application Summit is coming up in November in Barcelona. Um, this is really about growing our ecosystem and making it, uh, this is a co-hosted event with KDE. Anyone here from KDE? Okay, thank you for coming. <laughs> And this is really about reducing fragmentation and collaborating when possible and building something that can be a competitive product in you know, the desktop market. So we encourage you all to come and to participate and the call for talks is open now until end of August, to, so submit your papers. Um, and the last thing is the GNOME release that Britt just mentioned. And it says September 11th, um, it is now September 12th. Uh, in solidarity to uh, events, so yeah. there we go. Great. Okay, this is just a plug to join us. Uh, we also have some boffs later this week, so we encourage you to attend. And again, we love people from all backgrounds, so if you are any, just a human, we would love to have you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Billy here from the commercial team and I made uh, short slides. And here are the footprints uh, for the conversion. And uh, this year will be the uh, risk in the Indonesia. Mm. And the last year we have conversion at uh, Taiwan. We co-hosted co with the uh, Open Asia and the Cost Hub. Um, and I just got some data uh, from the report. Uh, the register is about uh, 1,400. And uh, in day one, there are uh, about um, 100 and uh, 400 people. And in day two, yeah, at about uh, 800 people. And uh, for Gnomisha, we have two tracks. And um, we have 18 speakers. Mm, yeah, anyway, it's a um, big success for Gnomisha. And uh, this year, um, we, uh, we, we call for host at March and uh, um, in April, we got two proposals. Uh, one is from Melbourne, one is from Grisk. And finally, we voted for the Grisk again. Uh, uh, Grisk, uh, uh, we will go to Indonesia again. Yeah. And um, uh, in May, we finished the local computation. And here is the logo for Gnomasia for this year. And uh, we just uh, finished the cover paper. Um, the deadline is uh, uh, August 20th. And uh, the local team also helped to do uh, uh, two road show events uh, so let more people know about the GNOME issue and GNOME. And now uh, we still uh, call for sponsorship and um, the, the registration will be open soon. So anyway, anyone here is welcome to GNOME issue. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Thank you.
Did we get that right? Petra, are you back? Hi, I'm still Petr, this time from localization. So, uh, I wish, you know, we had uh, some other members of the, the GNOME translation team uh, being on the stage right now because they do the stuff, you know, they keep the localization server up and running. Uh, we have a great translation community, translation documentation, translating UI strings, reporting bugs, you know, giving the feedback we all need, I think. So, thank you. And uh, uh, I want to use this as an opportunity to actually invite whoever is interested in localization, internationalization, globalization, otherizations, uh, documentation. Uh, Monday in the afternoon we will have a meetup, probably more like an unconference setup. You know, whoever wants to come and uh, uh, talk to others about these topics, you are welcome to join us. We will also have uh, Leonardo Fontanelle, our Brazilian Portuguese translator, join us remotely giving a presentation on the localization processes in Rome. So, so yeah, join us on Monday. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Michael from Release Team and I'm instructed to keep this short. So, um, what have we done in the past year? So the most important thing you will notice is that we now have flat pack runtimes built from Dome Build Meta. Uh, so that's kind of a big deal. Uh, we've had this working since September or so. Uh, many thanks to Jordan, Abdurrahim, everyone else who's helped with that. Um, it's really amazing. Here's the problem though, uh, whenever you change the dependencies in your modules or you change your build system or the build flags, you break the runtime build and we don't have a runtime for the next several days until someone fixes it manually. So we need some more help from you all to keep track of this. Um, we're gonna be proposing uh, sort of a, uh, so something similar to the old GNOME 2 dependencies policies, except, um, except uh, our proposal is going to be that you just tell us when you're changing dependencies so that we can avoid breaking the runtime for everyone. That would be really great. Uh, so that's one of those things that we've been working on uh, recently. Uh, we are also going to be uh, proposing some changes in the schedule because now that we have a runtime, like actual binary products that we release, um, uh, we, we need to figure out uh, how to, uh, the, the two point releases don't really work anymore because we want to keep the runtime supported for a full year. Uh, so we're gonna be proposing uh, way more point releases than we've traditionally done. Uh, so this will be interesting to, uh, to see how this works out in practice. Uh, that's not to say you have to do releases for your modules on these schedules, but if you do happen to do releases for your modules, uh, then we'll gather them up together and do push out a refresh runtime every month or every two months or something like that. Um, on that note, uh, we have a bunch of people who don't like tarballs. Uh, so we're beginning to investigate uh, releases without tarballs, just pushing git tags instead. Uh, there's a lot more infrastructure work that needs to happen to make this possible, so please don't stop releasing tarballs in the meantime, but this is something that uh, uh, we're uh, going to be working towards. Uh, lastly, and perhaps most interestingly, uh, GNOME OS. Uh, if you remember, GNOME Continuous used to produce VM images uh, of GNOME, so you could like log into the desktop, test it, see what's going on. I know the designers in particular uh, really miss these VM images. Uh, there's Tristan has been doing a lot of work recently to try to get this up and running again so that hopefully we can uh, have these VM images. We're calling it GNOME OS, it's just a platform for testing GNOME, but um, not, not like something to compete with Linux distributions, but uh, that's what we're calling it. Uh, so lots of interesting work. Um, oh, uh, tarball deadlines, we're gonna move them to Saturdays. Cool, great, cool, bye. Hi everyone.
one. Um, yeah, so I have just, just told that I should keep my part short, and it isn't short, but I will do my best. So there is a lot more info on the slides. If you have some questions, please reach me out. I'm the other half of the infra team. Uh, Andra couldn't be here, so uh, I'm in here for uh, for him, kind of. Uh, I think that list used to be longer. I don't know what happened to the other people. I decided not to ask. Um, <laughs> yeah, so there are kind of three most important things we have been doing over the last year and a little bit more. The first thing is OpenShift. Uh, the bottom line is that we give more power to other people, so you don't need to follow us and ask questions when we will do something. We just give you access and you are responsible for your own service. Uh, this way we can also kind of reduce the workload on us. Uh, we are also migrating services that are not owned by anyone uh, other than us, that is. Like PageBean, Etherpad, Blocks. Um, yeah, the list is longer. We are now working on uh, localization, um, planets, and probably something else, but I don't remember. Anyway, quite a lot, and the goal is to actually reduce the number of the servers we are using because everything is in containers and Kubernetes, everything is fancy, uh, and the future is now, right? Uh, so yeah, that was the first thing. The other thing is GitLab. Uh, I haven't been around when the migration started, but I think everyone is very happy in comparison to what he had before. Uh, still, there is a number of things to do about all of this. So, uh, first, we actually had to migrate our own code from CGIT and, and things like this. So, we self host now, uh, including Puppet. Um, yeah, the other thing we have been working on was monitoring for runners. So, you don't need to come to us to say that something is broken. We know now, uh, yeah, if I can use that opportunity, it would be lovely if you don't push more than seven broken builds in a row, otherwise I will be woken up at night, so uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, and thanks to sponsors like Canonical, we have been able to reduce numbers of AWS and DigitalOcean runners, so more cash in the wallet. Uh, from the other minor stuff, we have new fancy status page where everything is updated automatically, so you can even subscribe with RSS and know when everything is broken. Um, Andrea is evaluating Ganetti uh, for managing virtual machines because it turns out the current process is very manual and we won't retire everything. We still need things like DNSs, um, mail server, all the boring stuff. We can't or don't want to move to containers. And we are also working on uh, working class, so automatizing everything that is manual. So deployment of GitLab runners, uh, renewal of VPN certificates, also regular SSL certificates, persistent storage for OpenShift because that's some dark magic turns out. So yeah. Um, yeah. For those of you who were here last year, you probably know that I have been hired also to work on Slathub. So from new stuff, uh, Alex wrote new fancy flat manager uh, in Rust, so that's what we have been using uh, ever since. And uh, yeah, we kind of can track everything better and provide tokens for external teams like Free Desktop SDK, uh, so we don't need to handle every build ourselves. Uh, we have also added beta branch uh, to, to our infra, so if you want to, uh, you know, provide some new new version or unreleased version to your users, uh, then that's possible now. Uh, we actually have infra monitoring now, so we know when everything is broken. Uh, that's something new. Uh, and for a week, we can actually, instead of printing a message that your app has been deprecated, uh, make an automatic rebase and everything, in theory, works out well. So that's for the status. Uh, future plans for GNOME Infra is to, as I said before, uh, either lower the number of the virtual machines or just consolidate some services. And uh, what else? Yeah, migrating remain services to OpenShift, but that's kind of connected to the uh, lowering the number. 
Um, yeah, Andrea said that we are going to migrate uh, servers from Phoenix uh, data center uh, to, I don't remember where, Riley, I think. So there will be downtimes. That's why we are kind of pushing a lot the OpenShift migration because that will help a lot with that. Uh, obviously, we know beforehand when something will be down, so we will be sending emails and hopefully uh, no big disruption will happen. And if it goes well, our friends from uh, Mythic Beasts will give us beefier hardware, uh, so everything will be so fast on FlatHub that uh, basically will happen on its own. So, yeah, that would be it for me. Thank you. Okay, so we're running a little bit late for the group photo, so um, did everyone say cheese? <laughs> right, okay, so if you return your ballots um, to the back of the room um, if, if on your way out, um, then these will be counted during the Q&A. Uh, so please make sure you get those in before the ballot box closes, which is pretty much uh, when the group photo, after the group photo happens. Uh, thanks very much. If we just head out just outside, and then we'll pick it up and have the group photo. Then we'll be back for the Q&A. Thanks very much, everyone. Some of the changes were in there, but...